Good morning. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader. It's my honor to be here as we say goodbye to Barb. We thank you for joining us through technology. It's the gift that we have in this unfortunate time, but we are glad that you are here with us to support the family. Will you please stand as you are able? Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister, Barb Krutz, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. 
Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We please join us for our opening hymn, Amazing Grace. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Barb Krutz. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our word for the day.
Our first reading comes from Isaiah 40. God's people are comforted. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Our next reading is from Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones. Give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. But your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the gift of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, the greatest of these is love. And here is the reading. We please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk with you much. I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ to you this morning. Before every occasion, every funeral, I usually meet with the family, and it was a blessing to meet with them. Even though it was on Zoom, it was a blessing to be with you and to remember some of the wonderful things that you told me about Barb. I was not able to meet Barb before uh, the disease and before she was taken. I visited often with Gary and her and provided communion, but... Barb wasn't quite the same as you knew her, so I got to know her a little bit be- with, with our conversation. Barb was a loving person to, to her family and everyone she encountered. One could tell by her smile, which I'm told barely left her face. She was kind and caring and faithful, and her children could not Im- imagine a better mom. She loved her family and God. She connected them every day by praying for her children and her family. Her faith helped her focus on finding the positive aspects of life. She was born in the Midwest and grew up on her father's farm. This upbringing fired her love for gardening and more importantly, taught her the importance of family and hard work. She often worked plowing the fields, planting crops and baling hay. When she would return home from college on spring break, she resumed her work in the fields, bearing the cooler temperatures of the Midwest. As she drove the tractor, she would roll up her sleeves, wishing to tan herself to match the complexion of those who traveled further south on vacation. One year, her father planted 5,000 trees in one of their fields, and a great storm blew them over. Her and her family spent countless hours setting all of them back up. She was not one to back down from hard work. When her daughters faced difficult challenges, she reminded them, you all come from a long line of strong women. After graduating from college, she became a teacher. And then, having children, Barb focused on them. She created wonderful memories as they traveled to Paris, where they walked up the Arc de Triomphe and the Eiffel Tower, as well as traveling to other places and having other trips. And as much as I crave to hear more about those memories, you all, Barb's family, wished to share with me just the simple loving traits that Barb possessed. She was a great cook and a baker. She baked awesome gingerbread cookies and even made her own graham crackers. The family celebrated half birthdays in order to make pies of every flavor. Blueberry, cherry, strawberry, rhubarb, pumpkin, pecan, even cream de mint. I know I'm missing some, Gary. I'm sorry I didn't write down that fast. Our Savior Lutheran Church benefited from her cooking and baking as she provided communion bread as she was able And the Purdue Lutheran ministry was provided with many Sunday evening suppers. Barb was a great listener. When all of her children got home from school, she'd always ask about their day. And she didn't allow one-word answers. If you responded with good or fine, she asked again, give me one or two things what made it good or fine. As much as she promoted family time, she also found time to spend with each child just one-on-one. 
And as the children matured, they realized the advocate that they had in their mom for them and for others. Barb had a purpose-driven life to be a volunteer. She volunteered at school and sometimes would substitute in her children's classes. She was on the school board and promoted the building of the girls' softball field at the high school, as well as becoming the girls' scout leader. Her children never heard her say a bad word about anyone, or any bad word, period, as they were growing up. Though one colorful word might have slipped out as Barb and Jill were sewing the quilt that you saw during the, the uh, slideshow. You know, those paper piece quilts are a real mm, hassle to deal with. And as she went to support her children at sporting events, she did as much as she could, but ended up talking with friends instead of watching the game. I mean, they would actually hear her laughing and, and talking until they would actually hear her say, we better start watching the game. <clears throat> As conflicts arose, and you know raising four children, you, that was bound to happen, Barb made sure that no one was allowed to say anything negative about the other person. Rather, she made them confront the issue. <laughs> the world needs more of that right now. She was very intentional with the words that she used when speaking to her children. In describing them, she never used gender-specific words, rather used descriptive words like strong and smart and nice, maybe sometimes naughty. Barb will be remembered for her love of her family, her kindness, her generosity, and her incredible faith. She will also be remembered for the way she loved her husband, Gary, as well as how their relationship, how their relationship mentored the relationships of their children and their spouses. On Tim and Lindsay's wedding day, she gave them some great advice. And as a pastor, I fully promote this advice. She told them to keep the ch church pews warm. And coming from an interdenominational marriage, Barb was raised Catholic and married into the Lutheran faith. She pulled aside Jill's husband, Mike, also raised Catholic, before their wedding and said, everything will be fine. God is love. God loves through grace and not through inducing fear. In our gospel lesson today, we, we heard the words Jesus speaks to his disciples after telling them he will soon be returning to his loving parent, God. Jesus tells them to believe in God and in him. He's going to prepare a place in God's house which has many dwelling places. He tells them he will return to take them there. And he continues by saying that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through him. And if you know Jesus, you will also know God. That's the promise we have from Jesus. From now on, we know him, and we have seen him. In this promise, we know our eternal life is assured in the grace and love of God who came to earth in human form, who took on flesh and sin, who rose from the grave and who ascended into heaven to prove that nothing, not sin, not even death, could separate us from God's love. In the passage from 1 Corinthians, this passage was the one that the whole family agreed upon having read today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we hear love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, loves that never ends. These words written by the Apostle Paul describe the love God has for each one of us. And these words encourage us to have the same love for one another. And I'm sure that they remind you of your mother and your wife, your friend. 
Jesus gave the words we heard in our gospel this morning to his disciples as he was preparing them that he would no longer be with them. I can only imagine the last several months. And now they've been heartbreaking by not being able to hold a conversation with Barb or with your mom. On one level, we know that she was able to hear you. And I'm wondering if these loving words spoken by Jesus might be valuable if you hear them again. As you know, Barb is at peace and with Jesus. And maybe you could hear them as coming from Jesus and your mom together. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have taught you. Peace I leave with you. God's peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. I do not, and do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk with you much for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. May God give you peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Barb is part of each one of you and all of those that she ever interacted with. Barb is singing and jamming, cooking and baking, listening and laughing in heaven. She is in peace under the promise that we share from God, that our eternal life rests in God. She is watching over you now until you are reunited again forever. Amen. Will you please join us as we sing Beautiful Savior.
you please join me as we profess our faith using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your life and light. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither li not death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us commend Barb Cruz to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Barb. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. I'll ask you once again to please stand for the last time as we sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee as our sending hymn.
receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you.